Hi, this is Jim Brosson. I'm going to talk to you today about the product backlog hierarchy. Now, the idea that the product backlog is a simple prioritized list is pretty widely prop propagated in the Agile education and, and literature, but simple lists are not really that helpful. We can and should take advantage of the hierarchies the tools make available to us. Now, for this presentation, I'll assume we have a hierarchy much like what is recommended by the scaled Agile framework, also known as SAFE. So I'll refer to themes, epics, features, and stories, and the hierarchy is organized that way. But for what it's worth, there is no general agreement on the naming convention for the hierarchy of requirements. You can find a lot of different combinations of names, and the same names are used in different order in some places. This is just the list of names I'm going to use today. Okay, putting aside how the product owner got started, she typically wants to break big rocks into smaller rocks, break epics down into features, and then features into stories. Looking at this example, email calendaring is broken into epics for organizing email, managing email, managing the calendar, and managing context. And then for managing the calendar epic, there is a feature to view the calendar, which is broken up into stories to view by month, by day, by week, and so on. This is a product breakdown structure that has successive abstractions of the product. Having a product breakdown structure facilitates shared understanding of the solution domain for both the developers, testers, and for the customer as well. This view also helps us to filter out stories for our next level of enhancements to arrive in a minimal viable product. An alternate hierarchy could be derived that would better suit the project manager, and that is basically a work breakdown structure view. So we might use epics, features, and stories to show what will be shipped in sprints and MVPs. A view of, of what will be shipped when is important, but we need the product breakdown structure in place first to help us make decisions on MVP and sprint content. A product breakdown structure can continue to provide structured understanding of the product to the team and the customer after delivering MVPs. So I recommend that we not structure the product backlog as a work breakdown structure. Now in Scrum education and in books and blogs, I've seen the following recommendations. Stories fit into sprints, features fit into a release, and epics can span releases. First of all, the word release, it's ambiguous. A release is often considered equivalent to a project, a collection of work that may span maybe two to six sprints. The word release is often also used to refer to deployment of code. Now, I've seen release managers refer to project managers, and release managers may also refer to deployment managers. Now, I can guess how this happened. Back when we printed our product on CDs or diskettes, the deployment package was the same as the body of work in the project. So the word release could really work both ways. But that's no longer true, since for most of us, we're trying to use continuous deployment. Some now use the phrase product increment to refer to the work of a project. For this presentation, I'll use the word MVP, minimal viable product. Now a second source of confusion here is the word feature. In many contexts, the word feature is equivalent to the word requirement. It's a general term. Or the word feature can be more specific, referring to the parent of a story as we see in the hierarchy I defined at the beginning of this talk. Now, when we read about deployments, we often refer to deployment of features. In this context, feature just means requirement in the general sense. Typically, the intent is not that we're deploying the parent of stories. So saying that features fit into a release, which, by the way, uses two ambiguous words, is really meant just to be a sizing statement, and that's all. All the statements on this page are really just sizing statements. Now, when we're creating an MVP, we're looking for a minimal collection of stories that provide value to the customer. To get to an MVP, we will pick one or several of these stories from a given feature. Features that are parents of stories in the MVP also contain stories not in the MVP. So in this picture, Sprint 1 stories are shown in green, and obviously the feature parents for those stories have other stories that are not in the Sprint. So the feature is not really a good deployment package. But let's take this a little bit further. Making the, the parent, the feature, a deployment package, what would that imply? 
To collect the Sprint 1 stories into a feature, we need to create a new feature for that purpose, since the product breakdown structure, as we just saw, is organized differently. Now, similarly, this deployment package feature has no obvious parent in the product breakdown structure. Going further, since the stories can have only one parent in the hierarchy, to have a deployment package feature, we need to break the product breakdown structure and create a work breakdown structure. So we end up with a Franken backlog that is part work breakdown structure and part product breakdown structure. Please don't do this. Now the story mapping view is just a better way to describe your backlog. The epic features and stories <coughs> hierarchy is still pretty obvious. We can see that manage calendar epic has a view calendar feature that includes stories for view daily format, weekly format, and so on. But we can also see which stories will appear in which MVP. In your tool of choice, you should be able to preserve the product breakdown structure in the hierarchy, but also see which stories are in which sprint and which MVP by using other fields in the tool. You should not need the hierarchy to be a work breakdown structure. So in summary, I recommend the product backlog should be a breakdown structure. And also, let's please stop using the words release and feature. Just, they're just too ambiguous and cause too much confusion. Thanks for listening. I'm Jim Brissom. Bye.